Okay, so how do we deal with fractions and square roots? Well, we're gonna discuss this in this particular video and we're gonna take a look at three problems. We're gonna do each of these. And each of these has a slight twist, but I picked these problems because it kind of highlights the skills that you're gonna need to understand if you're taking any sort of algebra course. So if you think you can simplify each one of these, and I'm not looking for you to use your calculator here, so you can put your calculator away, but each of these expressions needs to be simplified. Again, if you're taking any sort of algebra course, this is stuff that you absolutely need to know. But if you're not quite sure, stick around for a couple minutes. I will show you exactly what to do. This is a very important topic in algebra. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to help me out by liking it and subscribing to my channel. Okay, so let's get into square roots and fractions and radicals. These are... You know, some of the some of these problems here are going to be pretty easy, but other the other, some other ones here, there's going to be a bit of a twist. All right, now I'm going to kind of lay this out here. We're going to do this problem first. This is going to be the easiest, and then we're going to go on to this problem. This problem has a bit of a twist, and then this one here is uh, much more involved. So let's get to it right now and talk about this first problem. All right, so how do we find the square root of nine sixteenths? Well. We need to know this property right here. You can see I already um, wrote out the answer, but here's the main idea. If you're taking the square root of a fraction, okay, and you have one big square root of A over B, well, that's equal to taking the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator. So you can kind of break this up. You can either take the square root of the entire fraction, or you can have two little square roots, one for the numerator, and one for the denominator, so you can kind of see it this way. So the square root of 9 sixteenths, this fraction, I can write this as the square root of 9 over the square root of 16, and then of course I can easily find the square root of 9, that is 3, and the square root of 16, that is 4. Now, let me mention something here to you real quick. When we're discussing um, basic square root problems, things like this, you want to just stick with the principal square root. In other words, here, the square root of 9 is equal to 3, although some of you might uh, be thinking, oh, isn't the square root of 9 equal to plus or minus 3? That is true. Okay, the square root of 9 is equal to plus or minus 3. And um, this is really uh, going to be applicable when you're solving equations, finding roots, etc. When you're doing a problem like this, you just go ahead and write that principal square root, which is just going to be the positive version of this answer. So don't feel compelled to have to write both positive and negative uh, in your answers. Okay, so this is um, from my experience. But again, you want to check with your teacher when you're doing these problems. But typically, you're just going to be asked to find the principal square root, which is just the positive version. Okay, so the square root of 9 over 16 or 9 sixteenths is uh, equal to 3 over 4. And the main principle here, again, that we're using the principle of square roots is the, um, the square root of a fraction, A over B, is equal to the square root of A over the square root of B. So you can either go this direction or this direction, right? So this is a principle or a property of square roots that you need to commit to your long-term memory. But if you knew that, that's excellent. And now let's move on to our next problem. Okay, so here we have the square root of one-third. So knowing this principle, I'm going to say, okay, I'll just take the square root of the numerator, that's the square root of one, over the square root of three. Okay, I'm just applying this property I just showed you right now. And the square root of one is one, and then the square root of three is just the square root of three. Okay, so how many of you think this is a good answer? Okay, are you saying, um, or would you turn this answer in uh, for credit on a quiz or test? So if you would, you'd be like, oh yeah, that looks pretty good to me. And well, unfortunately, I have to give you a sad face because this is not correct. So was some of you are saying, what are you talking about? It's not correct. You're just showing me what to do here. Well, we have a problem, okay? This is correct up to this point, but we're not done. Okay, we have one over the square root of three. The square root of three, the square root of three right here is something we would uh, classify as an irrational number. Okay, an irrational number. Now on a number line, 
we have different numbers. So here's zero, here's one, here's two, here's negative one, here's negative two. So we have all sorts of numbers on the number line, okay? So we have natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, rational numbers, and then something called irrational numbers. So irrational numbers are numbers like the square root of three um, or the square root of seven. So if you go into your calculator and you go to the square root of three, you're gonna get a decimal, okay? You're gonna start getting some sort of decimal answer and your calculator is gonna continue on with this decimal. This answer, okay, in terms of a decimal never ends. This decimal goes on forever and ever and ever. It's what we call non-terminating and non-repeating, okay? So here we're trying to divide one by a decimal that never ends, it never stops, it never repeats itself. So in mathematics, we do not like that. We do not like to divide a number or have in the denominator an irrational number, okay? So let's just make sure we're super clear about this because a lot of you might get confused. Let's take a look at this. What if I had one over the square root of nine. So you might be saying, well, there's a square root. Isn't this an irrational number? No, uh, because nine, we could take the square root of nine. That is uh, simply three. So that's one third, no problems, okay? However, the square root of three is an irrational number. So this is a problem, okay? The way it's written right now. So we're going to have to do something about this. And luckily we have a procedure that we're going to do, and that's um, called rationalizing the denominator. Okay, we're going to rationalize the denominator. That's the term, and of course, I'm kind of just using some shorthand here. So what does that look like? Well, I'm going to show you this right now. Okay, so here we can see our answer is 1 over the square root of 3, but it's incomplete because we have this irrational number down there. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to kind of use a little trick. So we're going to take this 1 over square root of 3. This is our number and we're going to multiply it by 1. Okay? So if you take a number and you multiply it by 1, what's the answer? Well, it's just the number, right? So if I take 1 over square root of 3, multiply it by 1, it just goes back to 1 over the square root of 3. Okay? So that's pretty straightforward, but this one that I'm going to multiply this one over square root of three by is going to be a fancy one. Okay, I'm just not going to use the number one. I'm going to use another version of one. And that is going to be the square root of three over the square root of three. So let me ask you, any number divided by itself is equal to what? Well, hopefully you said one, right? So that is the case. So any number divided by itself is one. So what we're going to try to do here is we're going to rewrite this 1 over square root of 3 so we don't have a square root of 3 in the denominator. And the way we're going to do that is called rationalizing. So the procedure is this. Whatever the um, radical you're dealing with here, here it's square root of 3. We're going to multiply by a fraction, square root of 3 over square root of 3. Okay, we're not breaking this thing because the square root of 3 divided by the square root of 3, again, is 1. Okay, so you don't, you know, you don't have to concern yourself by saying, oh, we're changing the problem. Well, no, because this whole thing right here is, in fact, equivalent to one, but we are going to make it look different. And now let's go ahead and actually do this math. So now we're going to take one over square root of three, and we're going to multiply it by the square root of three over the square root of three. This is called rationalizing the denominator. So here we have one times the square root of three. That is the square root of three. And then the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 happens to be equal to the square root of 9. So when you're multiplying square roots, like the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, that's equal to the square root of 3 times 3, just in case you don't remember that, or the square root of 9. So now we have the square root of 3 over the square root of 9. Of course, the square root of 9 is equal to 3. Now look at that. Okay, We have a nice, lovely whole number in our denominator, and that's perfectly fine, okay? So now we have the square root of three over three, and this mathematically is equivalent to one over the square root of three, but we like this much better because it doesn't have an irrational number in the denominator, okay? So very, very important concept when you're working with fractions and square roots. You've got to make sure you rationalize any fraction that has an irrational number 
in the denominator. Okay, if you do not do that, you will get points taken off on tests and quizzes. Okay, so let's bring, or let's uh, go ahead and go to our last problem, or this brings us to our last problem. So here we have four over one plus the square root of eight. Okay, so this is the expression. So some of you might be thinking, all right, uh, Mr. YouTube Math Man, are you thinking that we're gonna have a problem with this square root of eight? Uh, because this is an irrational number in the denominator. Do we need to do something about that? Well, if that's what you're thinking, you would be absolutely correct. This is a problem. Okay, so we're going to have to rationalize this, but this is uh, different than the uh, previous problem that we just did. Okay, in the previous problem, we had one over the square root of three. We only had one square root all by itself, so it was easy to rationalize. How do we rationalize right here? We have one plus the square root of eight. Well, we're gonna have to multiply uh, this entire fraction by something called the conjugate, okay? The conjugate, and the way that works is this. So let's take a look at our denominator. We have one plus the square root of eight. The conjugate is going to be the same numbers, okay? One and the square root of of eight, but the different sign. So if this is plus, this is minus. So this is the conjugate of this, okay? So let's do another example here. What if I had two minus the square root of five? What would be the conjugate? Let's say that was in our denominator. The conjugate would be two plus the square root of five. So it's basically the same thing. You just change the signs, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply both the numerator and denominator. That's basically the same thing that we did last time. Uh, if you, let's just go back here real quick. We multiply both the numerator, I'm sorry, the uh, numerator and the denominator by the square root of three. Over here, we're gonna multiply the numerator and denominator by the conjugate, which in this case is gonna be one minus the square root of eight. Okay, so you're gonna have to be pretty good at um, dealing with multiplications of binomials. In other words, can you multiply, let's say, 2x plus 3 times um, x minus 7? Okay, how would I multiply these two binomials? Hopefully, you remember the FOIL method, F-O-I-L. Okay, if you don't remember that method, I teach all this stuff in all my algebra courses. I have tons of videos on this um, on my YouTube channel as well. But basically, you're going you're gonna to have to multiply these two expressions, 1 plus the square root of 8 times 1 minus the square root of 8, using the same technique as a FOIL technique. In other words, you're going to have to look at these as two binomials. Okay, so the FOIL technique stands for first, outer, inner, last. If you don't know what I'm doing here, you definitely need to do some review as you're not going to be able to do this problem without understanding the FOIL technique. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this. And we'll start off first by multiplying four times one minus the square root of eight. So what does that look like? Well, we can kind of scoot this four right here. So this is four times one minus the square root of eight. So when I use the distributor property, four times one is four. And then four times this square root of eight is gonna be four square root of eight. So there is our numerator. Okay. All right. So now we have to go ahead and deal with this denominator. And let me go ahead and walk you through this right now. Give myself some room. All right. So let's just focus our attention here. And again, we'll use the FOIL technique, first, outer, inner, last. So the first is going to be, these are the first terms of each of these respective binomials. So one times one is one. Okay. So outer is going to be 1 times negative square root of 8. Inner is going to be the square root of 8 times a positive 1. So that is going to be a positive square root of 8. And then the last terms is going to be square root of 8 times another square root of 8, which is going to be a negative square root of 64, because this is positive that's times a positive times a negative. So we have negative square root of 64. Okay, so hopefully you're with me on this. Now let's go ahead and clean up this uh, denominator here. So what happens? Well, um, you can see our square roots are gonna go away right here. This negative square root of eight plus square root of eight, these are gonna cross cancel, those go away. And then the square root of 64 
is 8. Okay, we're, again, we're talking about the principal square root. So we're left with 1 minus 8. Okay, this is, again, the result of using the conjugate to rationalize. Now, notice we don't have any square roots now in the denominator. And then we have our 4 minus 4 square root of 8 in our numerator. So let's go ahead and continue forward. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, this is a lot of work, well, you would be correct. Again, you know, to deal with these expressions in algebra it does require a lot of concentration and skills, but we're still not done. All right, so we have 1 minus 8, which, of course, is negative 7 right here. So 4 minus 4 square root of 8 over negative 7. Are we done? No, we are not done. So you're like, oh, my goodness, is this is like the problem and never quits. Well, we're almost there, okay? What we need to do is simplify this square root of 8, okay? So let's go ahead and show you how to deal with this. So the square root of 8 is the same thing as the square root of 4 times 2, okay? So I can, this is the way I can write the square root of 8, and I can break up this big radical here, the square root of 4 times 2, as the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. So you want to remove any perfect square. So the square root of 4 is what? That's going to be 2. So this is going to be 4 times 2, which, of course, is 8. And that's exactly what we want to write. So this is going to be 8 times the square root of 2. That's what's remaining there. And, of course, we have 4 right there as other part of our expression in the numerator over this negative 7. And now we are done. There's nothing here that we can no greatest common factor that we can cross cancel. So we are finally, finally done. Okay, so yes, there is a lot involved when you're dealing with square roots and fractions. I try to uh, pick three uh, problems that are going to kind of, um, you know, represent the type of things you're going to see in algebra. But if you got all three of these right, I must go ahead and give you a nice, lovely, happy face, an A++, a 130% and a multiple stars for being such an awesome algebra student. Matter of fact, if you turn in this work and you're in my class, I might just tell you just to, you know, take the rest of the year off. I'll just send you your report card and your awesome grades. But listen, in all seriousness, this is very, very good if you're able to understand this. Now, if you were like, wow, you know, I didn't know, you know, this is really hard. You know, I didn't I, I get this. Well, you need to get this. So follow through. Okay, if you don't understand this, um, you know, look at this as a positive thing. Be like, okay, I don't, this is something that's important. I don't get it. So what you want to do is follow through. So how do you follow through? Well, again, if you are taking any sort of algebra course in my uh, Math Help program, you can check out all my chapters on square roots and radicals, whether it be Algebra 1, Algebra 2, College Algebra, Pre-Calculus, doesn't make a difference. You'll find that material in all those courses. And I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel that cover this stuff as well. But if this little video helps you out, don't forget to like it and subscribe to my channel. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.